science. Okay, Earth Science, this is your last week. So we are going to talk about weather this week. So just touching on it, and you're going to do, watch these notes, and then I've got a couple of assignments for you, but I know we can do it. All right, so the things we're going to talk about weather are specifically fronts, and there are four types that we're going to talk about. The first one is a cold front. So here's my cold front. That's when cold air, dense air, displaces warm, less dense air and forces the air, warm air up along a steep slope. So here, if you're looking at this picture, we can see here's the cold air, and the cold air is moving this direction. Here's the warm air, and the warm air, because it's less dense, is being pushed up. So the cold air is squishing forward and it's pushing all this warm air up. So this is causing lift to happen. Lift, if I can spell. And when you have, remember when we talked about how clouds form and they have to have that upward movement because it has to hit the dew point. When it hits the dew point, then it, water vapor condenses to form water droplets, which then are going to condense around like dust or salt something floating in the air and then if it gets up enough of them then we see a cloud form and you can see this is a big thunderhead cloud so in a cold front we have a high chance of having thunderstorms because we have a cumulonimbus cloud forming right here um, and if you're looking at a weather map, a weather map, the symbol for a cold front is a blue line, and that blue line has the arrows, and the arrows point the direction that the front is moving. So it looks like the front is moving this direction here. So the, the blue arrows show it's a cold front, so blue for cold, and the arrows show which way the front is moving. Okay, so cold front could form thunderstorms. The next one is a warm front. And this is um, associated with overrunning. So clouds associated with warm fronts, are, they are associated with warm fronts. And um, the frontal surface is much smaller slope than for cold fronts. So now we can see in our picture here was a warm front that the warm air is running over the top of a cold front. But you can see like this one had a much higher curve there. We're forming the, forming the thunderstorms. Here it's not as much. Um, so a warm front now, again, you've got lift is what we need. Remember, we need lift to form clouds, which then can form rain. But we're not really seeing any um, big thunderstorms usually. Usually it's just a rain event, but we don't have big towering thunderheads that can form like they can in a cold front. In a warm front, you have um, now a red line showing it's warmer air and circles that show the direction that the front is moving. So the front would be moving that direction in this diagram and some rain. Stationary front. This one has little or no movement. It has alternating cold and warm frontal symbols. So when you're looking here, it has the cold one there and we have the warm there. So it's they're going in opposite directions. So usually the weather is clear, partly cloudy. It could be light precipitation all day, but usually it's nothing severe. So it might be just a cloudy kind of dreary day with a stationary front. If you're looking at this picture up here, um, it says if the stationary front starts moving north, so if it starts moving this direction, um, then it will become what kind of front? So if the red starts moving that way, then it's going to become all that warm red circle. So we would say that's a warm front that would form. It would become a warm front. If the stationary front starts moving to the south, so that's with the, uh, the blue arrows. And we talked about what did the blue arrows mean from the last first slide there. And then it would become a cold front. So that's stationary front. An occluded front uh, forms because the cold front moves quicker and catches up to a warm front and kind of compounds each other so it gets stronger. And so when you have an occluded front, you could have very strong thunderstorms. So you can see when you have these two that where the cold front runs into the warm front, you can get strong storms that form. 
So occlude from strong sorbs. We also have different pressure systems. So um, in a low pressure system, you have air rises. And remember that would be something that could cause lift, which then means anytime air rises, we have clouds that can form. Um, cold fronts always spin counterclockwise. So if you draw an arrow around here, it always spins counterclockwise and inward. So you can see inward arrows. High pressure on the other end is sinking air. So if there is no lift, and so when you have high pressure, you have nice sunny days, blue skies, really nice. We like, we're hoping to see some of those this week, right? It now goes clockwise, but it goes out. So it's going clockwise around the high and means really nice days. So we've got low pressure, meaning stormy days. We've got high pressure, meaning nice, fair, sunny days. All right, so let's look at this. Air one. pressure. Air pressure. Oop. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, I'm everybody. meteorologist I'm Ryan meteorologist Davidson. Ryan Davidson. I'm, actually I'm actually Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's mom's, mom's cousin. cousin. And I work here at I work the... Here at the Other channel. Other channel. And, uh, and uh, I hear you guys are learning, learning about weather. About so we're going to talk a couple of things about weather systems and fronts and, and kind of how those all come together all to come make together weather. To and then we'll talk a little bit about your forecast. So first off, so first we're going to talk about understanding what goes on in a weather map. So first, we've got cold air. And as it pushes further to the south, along the leading edge of where that cold air is advancing is where we would set up a cold front. And that's going to be this blue line here with all these triangles. And they point in the direction the cold the front, the is, cold moving. front is moving. Now on the other side, on the other side we have a warm front. We, we have a massive warm, warm air moving northward or in any direction. Or in any direction. The, the leading edge of that warm air mass is where we draw this warm front, which is, warm gonna, front, which is gonna be a little be red line with the half circles. The, half circles. the best way to remember the it is where like little half sun so they're always denoting warmer air. You kind of work it out that way with sun, warm, warm front, right like that. So that's how we denote where a warm front lays. Now when we start moving and adding in and adding things, in things like pressure like systems. Pressure we have a low systems. pressure have system right here. System Air right on the low pressure the low system pressure moves system counterclockwise and inward. And inward. So when we start so putting start those putting air those masses around, around, around that area of low pressure, of low pressure we begin to we see begin to just see a few just things, a few things here. happening here. The warm air surging warm northward, air that's where the warm front is. The cold front surging southward, that's where we line up that cold front. And then we zoom in closer, where we get all the precipitation. What's going to happen here is you've got this air coming Coming this down, air from coming north, down from the north, and this air and kind of this going air towards the north and east. What happens is this piles up as it gets close to this warm air mass and it starts to lift. So where these meet, all that wind meets, we call that convergence, the meeting of air. When it happens, it starts to go. It has nowhere to go, so it has to go up. Once that starts going up, that's where we start to get clouds and rain. And usually along the cold frontal side of the storm is where we'll see things like thunderstorms. But on the warm frontal side, over to the North, over to the north, that's where we'll start to see we'll start just to broad see areas of rain areas and showers and cloudiness. And, cloudiness. and as that comes and through, all well, the weather gets a little bit cooler. Little bit cool. Now, high pressure, now high pressure, a little bit different. Little bit different. High, pressure high pressure systems, air goes clockwise, air goes clockwise and outwards, and outwards from, an area, from an area of high pressure. So why don't we ever see any rain or anything any rain near, or an anything near an area of high, near high near pressure? And when you have all of this air moving outwards, it's actually like if you're going to turn the hose right on the ground. What happens is that water goes down and it spreads out. You don't have any lift. You don't have anything to create that upflow of moisture to create any precipitation. So usually when we talk about high pressure, we talk about nice weather. But let's take a look at what your forecast is looking like as you go through the next couple of days. We won't worry about the forecast because that's not for us, but he does a good job of just basically telling us what we just covered here with the different types of fronts, cold and warm fronts, what we talked about, and then what happens around a high pressure system and a low pressure system. So if we look at this map, and this is just a just a generic map of the United States, um, we can say if we're going to draw arrows around these highs and lows, that we can see that here's a high pressure system. So high pressure, remember, talks about it goes clockwise outward from the high. So if here is in West Fargo, what kind of weather would we be seeing that day? Yes, it would be fair 
It would be sunny. It would be a really nice blue sky day. We're hoping that this is in the summer, so it would be a nice warm summer day. But if you look over here um, at this low, we can say here now, we've got um, this one. So the high was going clockwise, and now the low is gonna go counterclockwise around it. And it is going to bring in here, this would be a cold front, that they're expecting that you're going to have some thunderstorms that are going to start forming. And down here, we can see this cold front here is going to be running into this um, warm front that's here. And then right here, we have an occluded front. So you would expect rain and thunderstorms that will be moving um, into, uh, what was this be, North Carolina? Um, and then, so there'll be thunderstorms that were there. So when you're looking at a weather map now, you can kind of see where the weather is going to be stormy with a low or fair and nice with a high. And we can also see with a cold front that you can see thunderstorms that can form. Warm front could be rainy, that's there. So we have different options. Okay, so that is a basic overview of how to read a weather map and the different types of fronts and high and low pressure. So you're gonna go ahead now and you've got a couple of questions that you'll answer on Schoology.